Hey my dog YouTube, welcome back to a new video with Rams fan YT. And today we are going to Shropshire to a town we don't know too much about other than it has two names, either Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury. I am going to be using Shrewsbury because that's what I say and what most people in Shrewsbury say, according to a survey a few years ago. Well, Shrewsbury Town is the particular football club we're looking at, and they were formed at a meeting on the 20th of May, 1886, at the Turf Hotel in Clarenmont Hill, a suburb of Shrewsbury. This was following the demise of the first Shropshire Wanderers, and later, indirectly, after Castle Blues. The Blues were a rough team, you see, when leading to their demise after several games were marred by violence. The new team hoped to be as successful, but without the notoriety. Press reports differ as to the date of when the new club was founded. Uh, the Edo Shropshire Journals of 26th May 1886 reported the birth of a club at the Lion Hotel in Wild Cop in Shrewsbury, while the Shrewsbury Chronicle reported the club being formed at the Turf Hotel in Claremont Hill in Shrewsbury. It may be that both accounts are true, and with a get-together of a lion being finalised at the turf. After friendlies and regional cup competitions for the first few seasons, Shrewsbury were founder members of the Shropshire and District League in the 1890-91 season. They were later admitted into the Birmingham and District League in 1895-96. Many of the teams town faced in the early days have long since vanished. However, Shrewsbury met many of today's football league and conference teams, including Crow Alexandra, Coventry City, Stoke City, Kidderminster Harriers and Stafford Rangers. In 1910, Shrewsbury looked to move to a new ground, having spent early years at locations across the town, notably at Copform Barracks to the west of the town. The club moved to Gay Meadow on the edge of the town centre within the site of Shrewsbury Abbey and stayed there for 97 years. Shrewsbury's Birmingham League days were mostly mid-table, with a few seasons challenging near the top and the club were league champions in 1922-23. A move to the Midlands Champions League in 1937-38 saw the club enjoy one of the most successful seasons winning a league and cup treble. Shrewsbury were league champions, scoring 111 league goals. In addition, the Welsh Cup was won following a replay, and the team enjoyed a run in the FA Cup, and they also won the Shropshire Senior Cup. So after a good run of seasons in the post-war years, Shrewsbury were admitted to the Old Division 3 North of the Football League in 1950 after being Midland League champions in 1949-50. Shrewsbury Town were elected uh, to the Football League Division 3 North for the 1950-51 season, as I just said. This was following the decision to expand from 88 to 92 clubs, and Shrewsbury were then promoted to the 3rd Division in 1958-59. They remained in the 3rd tier for 15 years and slipped back to Division 4 at the end of 1973-74. The 1960-61 season saw Shrewsbury Town reach the semi-finals of the League Cup. After beating Everton, then the biggest club in the country, as they went on to um, maybe win the league that year, but certainly did quite well. And they beat them in quarter-final. And they lost narrowly only 4-3 on aggregate to Rotherham United. This era was also remembered for Arthur Rowley, who uh, arrived from Leicester City in 1958 and the club's first player-manager. During his playing and managerial career, he wrote Dixie Dean's goal-scoring record, scoring his 380th league goal against Bradford City at Valley Parade on the 29th of April 1961. Retiring from playing in 1965, he remained as manager until the July of 1968. Shrewsbury were promoted to the third division in 1974-75 as runners-up, before another successful season in 1978-79 when they were league champions under Richie Barker and later Graham Turner. Over 14,000 fans packed into Gay 
Meadow on the 17th May 1979 to see Shrewsbury seal promotion with a 4-1 win over Exeter City. In addition, the club had their best ever FA Cup run. It was as follows. They were way to Field Mill in Mansfield and beat Mansfield Town 2-0. In the first round, in the second round, they beat Doncaster Rovers 3-0 again, away from home at Bellevue. Uh, then in the third round, they beat Cambridge United 3-1 at home at Gay Meadow. Then in the fourth round, they beat Manchester City 2-0, also at the Gay Meadow. In the fifth round, they beat Aldershot Town uh, as the, a tool draw away from home in the home leg 3-1. And in the sixth round, unfortunately, they were eliminated after a one-all draw away from home of the Molyneux Stadium against Wolverhampton Wanderers. They lost 3-1 at home. The most successful manager there is probably Graham Turner, who won the third division championship in 1978-79. His first season charge, and he took the club into the second division for the first time. And they remained there for 10 years, although Turner did depart for Aston Villa in 1984. The club enjoyed some great times in the FA Cup in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Shrewsbury repeated their 1979 feat of reaching the quarter final in 1981-82. The fifth round game was particularly memorable as Shrewsbury were drawn to face UEFA Cup holders Ipswich Town for the second year, with Ipswich previously winning 3 0 in a fifth round replay. Ipswich were one of Europe's top teams, and Shrewsbury won 2 1 with goals from Steve Cross and Jake King. Mitch Davari, or Davare, or something like that, scoring for the visitors. Following this win, Shrewsbury faced Leicester City at Filbert Street in the quarter-final. With the game 2 all at half-time, Shrewsbury were 45 minutes from a semi-final appearance. But Leicester, having used three goalkeepers, and including a young Gary Lineker in their lineup, eventually ran out as 5-2 winners. The 1980s saw many big teams defeated by Shrewsbury, whose period in the old second division coincided with some of the current Premier League clubs. During the 1980s, Fulham, Newcastle United, Blackburn Rovers, West Ham United and Chelsea all lost to Shrewsbury Town. Middlesbrough were defeated at Gay Meadow at the end of the 1985-86 season, with Shrewsbury winning 2-1. This relegated Middlesbrough, who went out of business and almost out of existence, that same season. The match was marred by violence from Middlesbrough fans, with many of them later having to return to Shrewsbury for court appearances. In the mid, early to mid-1980s, the club enjoyed its most successful period in the Football League run. Shrewsbury survived through the sales of players, with some to have played for Shrewsbury, including Steve Ogrzovic, David Moyes, John McGinley and Bernard McNally. After a couple of relegation scares, Shrewsbury's second division life ended at the end of the 1988-89 season, after 10 years. As the 1990s dawned, the club were unable to make a quick return to the second division, and spending the early 1990s in mid-table, with in the third division on the 22nd of December 1990, Gary Shaw scoring at the quickest town, Shrewsbury Town hat-trick in 4 minutes and 32 seconds against Bradford City at Valley Parade. At the end of the 1991-92 season, three years after relegation to the 3rd Division, the club was relegated to the 4th, the first time since 1975. However, two seasons later, Shrewsbury won the new Division 3, which was the 4th tier, championship, under Fred Davis in 1993-94. And remained in Division 2, the third tier, for three seasons. Shrewsbury were not to rise any further, and remained in mid-table before slipping down again at the end of the 1996-97 season. The 1990s saw Shrewsbury make their first appearance at Wembley as finalists in the 1996 Football League Trophy Final. Shrewsbury lost 2-1 to Rotherham United. So, uh, they've just won it. I think that was the last time Rotherham United actually won the EFL trophy before yesterday. So congratulations to Rotherham fans if you're out there. And future Shrewsbury striker Nigel Jensen scored both of Rotherham goals. 
Wembley final was the beginning of the end for Fred Davis, and he was sacked at the end of the 1996-97 relegation season. By this time, Shrewsbury were less of a force, heading to a stale period. Dwindling crowds meant that Shrewsbury didn't have the finances to compete, and it was in this backdrop that Jake King arrived following a successful reign at local rivals Telford United. A successful Shrewsbury player during the 1980s, King was well regarded by the fans and the chairman of businessman Roland Weisherly. For Weisherly, the priority was to assure Shrewsbury's financial future before increasing the club's profile and finally to ensure the club's move to a new ground. King was forced to work on one of the smallest playing budgets in the league. He worked with the club's youth setup, bringing in promising non-league players. Um, however, with the pick of a transfer market finding better offers elsewhere, Shrewsbury were to see out of the 1990s in mediocre fashion. In the 1999-2000 season, Shrewsbury ended a poor se- endured a poor season, with King being sacked in November as the club flirted with relegation. Former Everton captain and Welsh international Kevin Ratcliffe was appointed manager to steer the club from relegation on the final day of a 1999-2000 season. With the club facing relegation to the conference, a 2-1 victory away to Exeter City kept the club in the league, after Carlisle United and Chester City both lost, with Chester being relegated. Ratcliffe worked on improving the side and former youth team and reserve player Luke Rogers emerged as a regular goal scorer. And with big names arriving at Shrewsbury, the team looked on the up, with narrowly missing the 2001 two league playoffs, despite being on 70 points. At the end of the 2002 3 season, Shrewsbury were on the up, with a youthful team strengthened by Ian Wowen, Nigel Jensen, and Mark Atkins. However, despite an encouraging start, league form suffered, including away defeats to Boston United. Rushton and Diamonds, and Cambridge United. Town conceded 16 goals across three matches, as they remained in the bottom half of the table. A sideshow, though, was a uh, FA Cup run. After dispatching non-league side Stafford Rangers and Barrow, Shrewsbury were at home to Everton in the third round. Town won in front of 7,800 people. A first-half free kick from Nigel Jensen gave Town the lead at the interval. However, an equaliser from Nicholas Alexanderson appeared to send the tie to a replay at Goodison Park. However, with minutes left from a free kick by Ian Wowen, Jensen heading him across to give Town the 2-1 victory. For Shrewsbury fans, a notable point was the performance of Shrewsbury's Peter Wilding. A former Sunday League defender from the local leagues, Wilding kept Wayne Rooney marked and Wilding was also one to escape criticism later. Chelsea were the fourth round visitors in a televised match on BBC's Match of the Day. Town, though, lost 4-0, with Gio Zola being the man of the match. A near-capacity crowd of 7,950 turned up for Chelsea, but from then on, form disappeared. The team won just twice in the league thereafter, and Jensen, who split opinions, was a scapegoat, as Jensen was once in an argument mid-match with a Shrewsbury fan, and with Ian Woe and another singled out being booed off after being substituted in his final Shrewsbury appearance. That was against Carlisle United, a 3-2 defeat which relegated Shrewsbury. Seven points adrift at the bottom, and having conceded 92 goals, the club contemplated the end of their 53 years in the league. Following angry demonstrations from fans, Ratcliffe resigned and Mark Atkins took temporary charge for the club in the final league game, a 2-1 defeat to Scunthorpe United, who were coincidentally the first league opponents for Shrewsbury Town back in 1950. After some speculation, Northwich Victoria manager Jimmy Quinn was appointed as Shrewsbury manager in May 2003, with the aim of getting Shrewsbury promoted back to the Football League at the first attempt. For the first time in many years, Shrewsbury was seen as the big fish in the league, with many experts predicting a league victory, 
With most of the previous year's players being released, Quinn assembled a whole new squad. With experienced non-league players such as Darren Tinson and Jake Sedgemore being joined by Colin Cram, Scott Howie and former League Cup finalist Martin O'Connor. On the field, a new look of Shrewsbury side seemed to have a desire that the previous side lacked, but at times they did lack a bit of consistency. Thrilling matches such as a 4-1 home victory over Hereford United were tempered by some embarrassing results, including a 5-0 away defeat to Dagenham and Redbridge, and two away defeats to local rivals Tilford United, both in the league and the FA Trophy. However, as the season went on, the side were able to grind out some decent results. The league title went to Chester City, but with 74 points, Shrewsbury finished third in the league, comfortably qualifying for the league playoffs. The first time the club had ever qualified, actually, for a playoff competition. In the semi-final, Shrewsbury faced Barnet over two legs. The opening leg at Underhill saw Shrewsbury lose 2-1, with Barnet scoring an injury time winner. Over 7,000 saw the return match at Gay Meadow, a match that was televised live on Sky Sports. Shrewsbury drew level on aggregate following a Luke Rogers penalty. With the teams at level after extra time, Scott Howie saved a penalty from Barnett's Simon Clist and Darren Moss scored the winning penalty, setting Shrewsbury for the conference playoff final against Aldershot Town at the neutral venue of the Britannia Stadium, home of Stoke City. The final against Aldershot on Sunday the 16th of May 2004 saw 19,216 fans visit the Britannia Stadium. Two-thirds of those were Shrewsbury fans, making the short journey up to the A53 to the stadium, and in glorious sunny weather, the two teams played out a one-all draw. And after both teams blew their chance to win the match in injury time, the game went to penalties. Striker Luke Rogers seemingly a banker to score a penalty, stepped up, but inexplicably blasted his shot high over the bar. With Shrewsbury fans anxiously looking on, Shrewsbury goalkeeper Scott Howie earned himself a place in Shrewsbury folklore as he saved three consecutive outshot penalties. Shrewsbury converted their remaining penalties, with defender Trevor Chalice scoring the winning penalty and began the celebrations, which began at Stoke, and continued in Shrewsbury for weeks. It may not have been glorious, but by sheer hard work, Shrewsbury were back in the Football League. Unfortunately for Shrewsbury, the optimism from the playoff final victory soon evaporated. An opening day 1-0 defeat to Lincoln City was an indicator of what was to come. As Shrewsbury were to flirt with the relegation places, and were defeated in the FA Cup first round by Histon. In the eyes of most fans, Jimmy Quinn was not up to the job and departed after just 14 league games, being replaced by former Preston manager Gary Peters. Peters came to Game Meadow with a modest but at the same time impressive track record, including a spell as Preston manager during the mid-1990s, during which he signed David Beckham as a lone player. After nearly saving Exeter City from relegation in 2002-03, he resigned and worked as a scout for Everton before taking up the Shrewsbury job. With the club seemingly on a downward spiral back to the conference, Peters was able to stem the slide and preserve Shrewsbury's football league status in the 2004-05 League 2 campaign. Since Peters looked to strengthen the side, transforming the side from one that was famous for relegation in 2004-5 to one that was seen as realistic promotion candidates. Many pundits saw Shrewsbury as relegation favourites in the 2005-06 season, but despite a poor start, Peters was able to guide the team to a 10th place finish, narrowly missing out on the playoffs. Off the field, Shrewsbury for so long, one of the smallest and least funded teams in the league, had the cause to look to the future with optimism. The Shrewsbury Town board, headed by Roland Weishley, was starting to see their policy of sound financial management pay off. With a club more solvent than many of its rivals, and the recent FA Cup run and subsequent fallout from the Ratcliffe era, and the solitary season of conference had galvanised the local support, and attendances were on the increase. 
And finally, after a drawn out and sometimes bitter planning process, stretching as far back as 1999, Shrewsbury's plans to move ground came to fruition. As Wysherley ceremoniously cut the first sod of soil at the new meadow in the summer of 2006. Despite the departure of talented young goalkeeper Joe Hart to Manchester City, Shrewsbury entered the 2006-07 season as promotion hopefuls in the final year at Gay Meadow. However, the home ground was a wreck was to wreak havoc with the opening part of Shrewsbury season. Poor weather led to the ground being flooded and several matches being called off. With several matches in hand due to the cancellations, the club were as low as 16th in the table by February 2007. With the team going on an impressive 14 match on beat and run, they were in playoff contention by the end of the season. Following a 2 all draw against Grimsby Town in the final league match to be held at Gay Meadow, Shrewsbury finished in 7th place and first qualified for the playoffs. Shrewsbury faced Milton Keynes Dons over two legs. Following a goalless draw at the game, Megado, they beat MK Dons 2-1 on their return fixture at the National Hockey Stadium, first winning 2-1 on aggregate, with Andy Cook scoring both of the goals. The team faced Bristol Rovers in the League 2 playoff final on the 26th of May 2007 at the new Wembley Stadium. In front of a League 2, which at this time was the fourth tier, um, now continue, it still is, which I keep on renaming it, don't I? Playoff final record crowd of 61,589. However, despite an early goal from Stuart Drummond, Bristol Rovers were strong opponents and hit back with two first half goals through Richard Walker and a late Sammy Igo goal, made it 3 1 to Bristol Rovers, sealing their victory. The club moved to the New Meadow Stadium for the 2007-08 season after an encouraging early start, which began with a 4-0 win away to Lucan City. Shrewsbury were amongst the league leaders. Have a 4-3 home defeat to Rochdale, starting an alarming nosedive in form, from which the side never recovered. Following pressure from supporters, manager Gary Peters left the club on the 3rd of March 2008 by mutual consent. Paul Simpson was appointed as the new manager on a three-year contract on the 12th of March and was able to guide the club to an eventual 18th place finish in the league. On the 21st of July, the club announced that it had secured a deal with the kit manufacturer ProStar for the naming rights of the stadium, which saw the club's Otley Road Stadium officially renamed as the ProStar Stadium. But don't laugh. The 2008-09 season saw Shrewsbury making a successful start, with a club running amongst the leading clubs in League 2. Home form was amongst the strongest in the Football League, with the team winning an unprecedented number of games with a high goal margin, including a 4-0 win over Macclesfield Town on the opening day of the season and a record equaling 7-0 league win over Gillingham. The team would eventually beat them in the playoff final and Shrewsbury progressed to the latter stages of the Football League trophy. Following a 7-0 away win at Wickham Wanderers and a 5-0 home win against Dagenham and Redbridge until going out in a penalty shootout against League One's Brighton Hope Albion. However, the club's indifferent FA Cup form of recent years did not improve as they lost away to non-league side for the second time in five years being beaten 3-1 by Blythe Spartans in the first round. Shrewsbury's league campaign during the 2008-09 season was hampered by a lack of wins from home. Despite several encouraging performances, Shrewsbury's win at their opening away match versus Exeter City was to be their only league victory away from home for eight months, until beating Rotherham United 2-1 at the Don Valley Stadium in April. The final day of the season saw Shrewsbury lying just outside the playoff places in 8th place, behind 7th place Dagnum and Redbridge, whom the club travelled to for their final league game of the season. A dramatic 2-1 victory saw Shrewsbury snatch the final playoff place at the expense of the plucky Daggers in their only second season of the Football League. Shrewsbury faced Bury in the playoff semi-finals with a then record crowd of 8,429 returning up for the opening game, 
We saw Bury take a narrow 1-0 win, thanks to a late goal from ex Shrewsbury defender Neil Ashton, who chipped the ball over goalkeeper Luke Daniels in a defensive mix-up. Whilst Daniels was seen by some as the villain after the home leg, three days later he produced a man-of-the-match performance as Shrewsbury progressed to their second playoff final in three years. Daniel saved a first half penalty from Phil Jevons, however with the time running out, Kevin McIntyre scored a spectacular 88 minute volley to take the tie into extra time. Daniels was to keep Shrewsbury in the tie during extra time as Berry tried to finish the game, with Shrewsbury plight being made tougher after the midfielder Steve Leslie was controversially sent off just seconds into extra time. However, the scores won all on aggregate. Shrewsbury were to convert all four of their spot kicks in the penalty shootout, with Daniels making two saves to send Shrewsbury through 4-3 on aggregate. Shrewsbury lost 1-0 to Gillingham in the playoff final of the Wembley Stadium on the 23rd of May in front of 53,706, with a goal in the 90th minute by Gillingham's Simeon Jackson, who was seen as controversial because of the referee at Clive Oliver giving a corner when the video evidence showed it clearly wasn't. On the 30th of April 2010, after a disappointing 2009-10 season, Paul Simpson was dismissed as manager of Shrewsbury Town uh, with only two games remaining. Three caretaker managers were installed for the remaining two games, with reserve team manager Stuart Delaney youth team coach David Hughes and former club captain Mike Jackson all taking up the role together, I think it was. Um, Shrewsbury finished a measurable 12th after showing signs throughout the campaign of at least finishing the playoff spot, but even briefly challenging for the automatic spots around the new year period. Coincidentally, performances in their last two games noticeably improved after Simpson's dismissal even with the absence of top scorer Dave Hibbert during the games. The town showed positive attacking football, and a draw against Morecambe on the 1st of May would have even made the playoffs still mathematically possible, although taking into account other teams' results, the game uh, wouldn't have really been much likely. A draw wouldn't really have likely done them much favours. The game ended though in a 3-2 defeat, after Kevin McIntyre failed to attempt to level it free all in added time from the penalty spot. They were to local rivals Port Vale on the final day of the season, and despite the circumstances, finished the season with a relatively strong form. They managed to draw with Vale, the only home side who managed to equalise, with the home side, sorry, only managing to equalise from the penalty spot. With such previous success as player and manager of Shrewsbury Town, during their heyday during the late 1970s through to 1984 at Wolverhampton Wanderers and then at cash-strapped Hereford United as chairman and manager combined, Graham Turner returned to Shrewsbury Town, being installed as manager on the 11th of June 2010. He couldn't achieve automatic promotion though and the club finished fourth at the end of the 2010-11 season. During the 2011-12 season, Shrewsbury had two mini-cup runs in both League Cup and FA Cup. Their League Cup saw them run, saw them defeat champions at side Derby County, 3 to a prime park. For goodness sake, we never do well in the League Cup. And Premier League Swansea City, 3-1 at Greenhouse Meadow, before being narrowly beaten, 3-1 by the Premiership's Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. The FA Cup saw them dispatch Conference Club Newport County and League Two Rotherham United before being very narrowly beaten 1-0 by the Championship's Middlesbrough at the Riverside Stadium. Furthermore, the club also went a year unbeaten at home during the 2011-12 season, winning 1-0 over Dagenham and Redbridge from a James Collins header to achieve promotion to League One after 15 years in League Two excluding spending the 2003 4 season in the conference. After a 15-year absence then, Salop were promoted to League One with a game to spend, or spare really, finishing in second place after a home win against Dagenham and Redbridge. Despite the success, preparations for the new campaign started with concern. 
as five of Shrewsbury's players, all of whom were vital in Charlotte's promotion success and all were also out of contract, were to leave in less than two months after seeing promotion. Most only being offered one-year contracts were surprised many of the fans. This included keeper Chris Neal, centre-back duo Shane Cansdall sheriff and captain Ian Sharps, with central midfielder Nicky Rowe, and 2011-12-16 goal-top goalscorer James Collins, all set to leave. However, Graham Turner was able to replace the departed players before pre-season with some promising shinings. This included experienced keepers Chris Wheel from Leicester City and youngster Joe Anyon from Lincoln City. Centre-back Darren Jones from Aldershot, central midfielders Luke Summerfield from Cheltenham Town and Asa Hall from Oxford United, utility and former Hereford duo Rob Purdy and uh, Paul Parry, who was at that time at Preston North End, and Southampton youngster Rob Ryan Dobble, who was a striker, and centre-back Michael Hector on loan from Reading. Pre-season, although naturally lacking the competition of league football, showed real promise for the new league one side. Shrewsbury showed great passing, movement on and off the ball, and a solid defence, with standout performances coming in from the likes of Hector Purdy, who played at left-back, uh, Summerfield and Parry, who were playing on the left wing. Or oh, Parry was playing on the left wing. The season itself wasn't to run quite as smoothly, though. And after a 4-0 hammering at Leeds United in the League Cup, Shrewsbury's first game back in the third tier, was also to end a narrow 1-0 away defeat to predicted promotion hopeful Shrewsbury, not Shrewsbury, to hopeful Sheffield United. Despite playing a very good game in the process, um, Shrewsbury's first few months in League One were to be full of promising performances matched with inconsistent results, beating Preston North End 1-0 at home matched their performances. Whilst losing 3-2 to then top of the table, Notts County away didn't. Well, I'm just going to briefly turn on the light. It's almost regular pins now. Just quite, can't quite gauge the light levels at the moment because it's just light enough to see, but I don't know if it is on your end. Um, then it soon became clear that after all the creative football, Strico duo Marvin Morgan and Terry Gornell were not producing the goals needed at this higher level of football. As a result, Shrewsbury form and passing game started to slip from a lack of points and wins, and Graham Turner's side also started to go through many changes game after game, most likely in the hopes of finding the right formula, and that's never really quite the right way to play, is it? Shrewsbury defences were to suffer in uh, form, and this began leaking many goals. So after the dropping and eventual departure of promising unknown centre-back Michael Hector, Darren Jones was to suffer greatly in form. Jones was to be paired with a number of different centre-backs. This included Shrewsbury players Ruben Hazel and Germain Grandison, as well as loan signings Lee Collins from Barnsley and Julian Bennett from Sheffield Wednesday. The former making many mistakes, much like his partner Jones, the latter showing some more promising performances before returning to Wednesday due to injury. Shrewsbury's passing game also started to let them down, with the midfield finding it hard to link up with the strikers, most notably captain Matt Richards, who had personally failed to match the form he showed in the season prior. As a result, by the turn of the year, Shrewsbury found themselves hovering around relegation places and still yet to clock up a single away win. Shrewsbury's form was to change considerably after knocking up their first away win on New Year's Day against Coventry. This coincided with a noticeable improvement in defence, with youngster Connor Goldson finding form. Promising performances from centre-back loan signings Rob Edwards from Sheffield United and youngster Yado Mambo from Charlton Athletic and a greater attacking threat for the signing and returning of Shrewsbury legend Luke Rogers and the rising former goal-scoring winger John Taylor. The rest of Salop's League One campaign was to be blighted with inconsistency in performances, tactics and results. Highlights included the introduction of Bolton loanee Tom Eaves, who was sent off, obviously, 
this weekend or on Friday against Hull City. The six foot five striker managed six goals in ten games, which included an impressive hat trick at home to Crawley Town before being recalled by his parent club, most likely due to his performances. Shrewsbury ultimately managed to seal League One safety with two games to spare after a one a one nil home win to Oldham Athletic. During the summer months, after eventually, stay, after eventually staying up with two games to spare, it was a chance to push on, look a major force in League One. However, failure of recruiting the right calibre of player for this level to, led to a disappointing season. Graham Turner resigned in February after a string of six consecutive defeats, and Mike Jackson took over as caretaker boss. Some highlights of the season were the two local derbies against Wolverhampton Wanderers, where a new record attendance at the Greenhouse Meadow was set on the 21st of September 2013, with a crowd of 9,510. Saw Town lose 1 0, with a late penalty scored by Bakary Sacco, the difference between the two teams. The return fixture in March saw Town gain a much needed point, holding on for a 0 0 draw. Relegation was finally confirmed after a 4-2 home defeat against Peterborough United. In May 2014, ex-Fleetwood Town boss Mickey Mellon was appointed first-team manager. His first signings included Ashley Vincent, Nathaniel Knight Percival and luring former forward James Collins back to the club. Let's see if I can find any more contemporary information. Because that would be helpful to uh, Town were promoted back to League One on the 25th of April 2015 uh, because they got relegated that season uh, with, with a 1 0 victory away to Cheltenham Town via Jean Louis Akpa. And uh, um, Jean Louis Akpa Akpro skull. Mellon left for Tranmere Rovers in October 2016, and he was replaced by Grimsby Town manager Paul Hurst, with Shrewsbury bottom of the league. In 2017-18, Hurst led Shrewsbury to the EFL final, ultimately losing to Lincoln, and he also led the team to the League One playoffs, but lost to Rotherham after extra time. Hurst left to join Ipswich Town on the 30th of May 2018. He was replaced by former Macclesfield boss John Askey. But he was sacked later in the year in November, having won just five of their opening 21 games. His successor, Sam Ricketts, was appointed manager in 20 in December 20. What is this? 2018? Uh, 2019. Uh, I think it's 2019. A highlight of the 2019-20 season under Ricketts was a fourth-round FA Cup tie against the holding European champions Liverpool. Which rules we drew to all. I do actually remember that game. It was quite. I I thought they might have won it actually, but it did look pretty good that game. Town only narrowly lost the replay one 0 at the field in front of attendance of fifty two thousand three hundred ninety nine. The following disruption into the season in March twenty twenty due to the COVID nineteen pandemic, final League One standings were decided on a points per game basis, with Shrewsbury finishing in fifteenth place. In November 2020, Ricketts was sacked with Shrewsbury in 23rd place, as replaced by Steve Cottrell. Um, <coughs> uh, I don't really know what we're doing right now. I think we're mid table, not going to be relegated, not going to be promoted, as it tends to have become a pattern recently for them. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're new around here, that would be hugely appreciated. I've got club nicknames of both League One and League Two for Friday and a history of your club with um, Sunderland yes Sunderland very big club very big history compared to where they are now but goodbye now